Hello and welcome back to whatever this is. I have been known to go on a fossil hunting trip or two or many over the course of quite a few years. So I thought if you out there on the internet are planning on going on your first fossil hunting trip or you're starting to get into it as a hobby or, or maybe more, um, or if your kids are really into fossil hunting and you want to take them with you, then I have a little bit of experience and knowledge on what to wear, what to bring, when you go, and also where to go. So this is going to be a very UK-centric video, as different places have different regulations, different environments, different weather, and all of those are going to affect what you're going to wear. Also, obviously, the UK has very changeable weather. This is going to be more of a fossil hunting season, which is starting like now really and goes through the winter sort of months, as this is when you've got more stormy weather, higher erosion, uh, more things being washed out of the cliffs and it's this sort of cliff or beach environment that again I'm going to be focusing on as this is where most of the very highly fossiliferous and also very accessible locations are in the UK. So we're talking places like the Dorset coast, the Jurassic coast, so Charmouth Lyme Regis, that sort of area. And then also up in Yorkshire, you've got the Yorkshire coast, we've got places like Port Mulgrave, Saltwick Bay, Whitby. All of these places are very, very accessible, uh, good for kids, good for families, good for you if you're just starting out. There's a lot of fossils to be found and they're pretty easy to get to. Obviously, if you're hunting in the summer months, then you're not going to need half the stuff that I'm about to tell you to wear because it's going to be pretty warm maybe and you just want to wear what you're comfortable in so in that case t-shirt hat sun cream i have to wear a long sleeve t-shirt because i'm actually allergic to sun cream but it's a good idea especially if you have kids to get them some sort of uv protective uh clothing like i have because i'm a baby but that's just for the summer months this is more what we'll be doing at this time of year so it does get very cold don't underestimate how cold it's going to be on a windy, windswept beach, even on the south coast. It's still going to get cold, it's probably going to be wet, and the main thing to remember here is layers. This is my usual base layer, uh, so just a t-shirt and then the handy dandy trousers of many pockets, um, but if I know it's going to be especially cold or I'm just not feeling being cold, then I will also break out the thermals. Things like this, this is just a thermal long sleeve vest. Uh, you don't need to buy fancy thermals or anything. Honestly, it's mostly about layers, so like a vest or a long sleeve t-shirt and some leggings or even just tights under your trousers will go a very long way to keeping you warm. On top of this, I like to wear a big old fleece and again, more layers, nice toasty material, keeps you warm. And then I'm not gonna put it on because I will be far too hot and everyone knows what a rain jacket looks like. I do have a few things to say about picking a jacket for going fossil hunting. Obviously, you want it to be waterproof. You want it to be quite warm and have a good hood that's gonna keep the wind out as well. Uh, on top of this, my main thing when I go and buy a new rain jacket is checking the size of the pockets. Because of this, I skip over the women's section in outdoor clothing shops, whatever. I skip over it entirely because the pockets are terrible. Because what I'm looking for in a raincoat is how well it's going to hold up on a fossil hunting trip, I will go through the entire men's department sticking my hands in the pockets and seeing, ooh, what fabric is this? Is a rock going to wear through this quickly? How many rocks can I get in this pocket? On top of this, if it's going to be especially wet or you think it's going to rain, I really, really recommend having some waterproof trousers. Waterproof trousers will not only keep the water out and the rain out, they go, again, a long way to keeping you warm, which is a very good thing if you're going to be on the beach for like six hours. As for the sort of shoes you're going to be wanting to wear, I always, or almost always, wear just hiking boots, good pair of hiking boots. They're my shoe wear of choice, but again you want to make sure these are waterproof, uh, or as waterproof as you can get them, and for me, I don't mind splashing out a little bit more on a good pair of boots. My last pair of boots, I only just replaced them this year, and that pair of boots have lasted me probably at least eight years. But if you're just starting out and you don't want to splash out a load on a good pair of boots, although you can get some pretty 
neat deals on decent boots, so you don't need to be spending like a fortune. Uh, but if you're just starting out, then closed toe shoes are better because, especially if you're going to be using tools like your hammer, you're going to be working around quite large boulders. Just a little bit of protection helps. If your fossil hunting trip is just going to be you wandering along the beach in summer and happening upon fossils, then sure, wear some sandals. That'll be fine. Uh, otherwise, wellies are really good for the UK, and especially there's a lot of places that are really, really muddy, and honestly, uh, I would probably prefer wellies over my walking boots in some of these. At this point, talking about different places and the different venues I want to bring, uh, I just want to mention the UK Fossil Hunters Association and their website and even app. UK fossils. This is a fantastic resource for looking up what you might find, uh, where you want to go exactly to find the best fossiling spots, and what the sort of environment is like, what sort of equipment you're going to need to bring, and importantly whether the place you're going is a site of special scientific interest, because this will affect what sort of tools you can bring and how you can act with those tools. I will leave a link down below uh, this is in no way sponsored or anything. Again, have you seen how many followers I have? It's not enough for a sponsorship. Uh, but I just think it's a fantastic, fantastic resource uh, with loads of great information, especially if you're just starting and you don't know what to do or where to go. Speaking of tools you might want to bring, yeah, one thing you may wish to bring uh, on your trip is a geological hammer. Uh, this is a hammer that's especially designed for splitting open rocks uh, where a lot of fossils in the UK can be found in nodules and things like that. Uh, this isn't necessary for all locations. Again, I would recommend you check the UK Fossil Hunters Association site as it will tell you what sort of equipment is a good idea to bring. And you do not need one as fancy as this. This is my S-Wing. I got it in America this year because it was actually cheaper while I was there to get one in America than it was to even order one off Amazon here. So I thought I will just do that and deal with the weight of my suitcase later. What you can get is a slightly more basic one and this works just as fine, to be honest. I just wanted a fancy hammer. And these geological hammers, you can get them for around 10 quid in some places. They're available online or if you're going to a very well-known fossil hunting spot like Charmer for Lyme Regis, shops there just sell them and they also sell them in kid sizes to be honest i wouldn't really bother with a kid size uh, it's not it's not going to be as good for splitting open rocks but if your kid is very small and they just want to be able to hit things go for it a side note for the hammers this is not necessary at all but it has changed my life and this is literally just a hammer holster it just attaches to my belt here stick the hammer in there and hands-free hammer holding. It's changed my life but it's not necessary if you're just starting out. Um, this is maybe the sort of thing if you decide that you really like fossil hunting then you might want to invest in one of these. Again, not too expensive but still it's not necessary for your first time. Another tool that's again a bit of an add-on, you don't really need them um, but it can make your life a little bit easier, is a chisel. I don't know where my big chisel has gone, which would have been more useful for a video format to be honest. <laughs> but instead I have my dinky precision chisel. This just gives you a little bit more precision in the exact plane of the rock or nodule that you're splitting on if you need a little bit more precision at the time. Make sure you get one that's pretty tough obviously as it's going to be used to split rocks. Uh, but other than that, Wilco, b and Amazon, loads of places sell them. Of course, if we are using tools, there is one thing that I cannot fail to mention, and that is safety wear. So, goggles here, you know, you know how they work. You put them on, you look really cool, you smash a rock. Anyone who has smashed a rock and had a little bit of pebble, rock, sharp, jaggedness come up and hit them in the face and cut their cheek will tell you that these are important. Do not start smashing things without your eye protection. You're going to want something to keep all your tools and eventually all your rocks and beautiful, beautiful fossils in. Uh, so don't forget to bring a sturdy rucksack. I recommend a rucksack over a sort of satchel bag. I do know people and professional paleontologists who do go out prospecting and hunting with a satchel bag. I just prefer this because it's a little easier on your back and your shoulders, especially if you're going to be lugging around a lot of stuff. 
full of heavy rocks and a couple of hammers, which I often am. But also another thing that might be useful is bringing something to wrap up your rocks in or put your rocks in. Tupperware, I also recommend newspaper, bubble wrap. If you get something nice like this, a little amulet that pops really neatly, then you may also want to bring some electrical tape as that will hold it in position where you've split it and keep it safe. Here, other things you can use, little sandwich bags, paper bags, specimen pots, anything that's going to stop your bottles bumping about and smashing into each other essentially. If you're going on a guided tour, especially with the Fossil Hunters Association, then you may be required to wear a little bit of extra safety protection. As such, I've got my really sexy high-vis vest. Super cheap, pick them up. Wilco's, hardware stores, b and Amazon. You can get these everywhere. And also, they may require you to wear a hard hat if you're going somewhere with a lot of cliffs. Hopefully your hard hat will look nicer than mine does because you haven't attacked it with a spray can and tried to turn it into a bee. Uh, but again, they're pretty easy to find. One thing to mention when I am talking about cliffs is to stay away from the cliff. Every year we hear stories of people who have strayed too close to the cliffs, they've become unstable, they've collapsed, people die every year pretty much on the UK coast, sometimes when looking for fossils. And it's really not necessary. For a start, a lot of the places where this happens are sites of special scientific interest, which, aside from being a mouthful to say, means that you cannot hammer the cliffs, you cannot hammer the bedrock. And often the best place to find fossils is not in either of those two places, because they might not have become exposed yet, but rather it's along the foreshore, looking in little crevices, pools, in the shingle. That's the sort of place you want to be looking for your fossils. Even if you were to find something in the cliffs and or bedrock, you wouldn't be allowed to remove it. If you find something truly spectacular in the bedrock, say a fully articulated ichthyosaur, then you might want to get a local museum or university or the council involved. Just let them know and they will be able to advise you on how best to proceed. Because ultimately, if it's not collected, the sea will destroy it. One other thing I would suggest you bring, regardless of the time of year, is some water. I mean, obviously in this sort of flask you could also bring tea, coffee, hot chocolate, whatever, which, if it's the middle of winter, may be a better idea, but I would always say bring some water as well. Because you're not going to realise how much water you're losing in this sort of environment. You could be sweating, it's probably going to be windy, which carries all the sweat away, so you're not going to realise as much. Uh, yeah, stay hydrated, kids. I would say that's about it for basic kit, uh, plus a couple of the extra things that I mentioned. Other things you may want to bring include stuff like hand lens. If you're going to a place where there are lots of tiny fossils, you can get a better look at them here. Or you may just want to collect reasonable sized blocks and then take them home and have a look at them, or collect sediment to sort microfossils. That's a possibility in loads of places around the UK as well. And it's hours of fun! For fossil hunting when it's cold, I would also recommend bringing some of these bad boys. Uh, these are just hand warmers and open the pack up, shake them up a bit in the air, they react with the air, they heat, they keep your hands nice and toasty. Either for during your puzzle hunt or afterwards when you're sitting in the cafe or the car and you're freezing cold and desperately trying to warm up with your huge mug of tea. On top of that, literally, I would recommend bringing a good pair of gloves. Uh, you may want to bring fingerless gloves for dexterity, or you may want to bring a huge pair of gloves that you just take off when you need them. It's down to you. I'm not going to tell you which gloves to bring. One thing that I would show you, that I'm currently using it, that I also like to bring, is a camera. Just... It's nice to have a camera. Even if you go to a place where you can't hammer the bedrock or cliffs, you may see something nice there. You may want to just take a picture to remember rather than disobeying the law and smashing it to pieces. And the most important thing to remember when fossil hunting is to have fun and be yourself. I say that jokingly, but it is fun. And also, the only way you're gonna find out the stuff that you personally like to bring is by going and getting out there and doing it and trying and finding out that you don't like to wear waterproof trousers even if it means you get soaked or you think that I did not mention enough layers and warm things. I know people who will only go out in full sports gear, fully kitted out, and I also know people who frequently went out in a beautifully pressed shirt and lovely trousers, and always remained spotless. Never did figure that one out, but I hope you found this useful. 
I hope that this was decent information. If you are planning on going on a fossil hunting trip, I would love to hear about it, or if you've just recently been, then please let me know about that. Uh, not only can I be reached in the comments here, I also have an Instagram for my paleontology exploits, uh, which again I will leave a link to down below, along with various other social media things and things that I think would be useful for the budding fossil enthusiast. Thank you for watching, stay away from the cliffs, and I will see you in the next one. Mageologist. <laughs>